This is part two of the lecture covering impulse. With respect to this topic, we're gonna to keep it short and simple. We're just gonna take a look at a one-dimensional case. In part one of this lecture, I showed you a photograph of what happens when a baseball bat, for example, is in contact with a baseball, and you can see that both objects in that photograph are noticeably deformed. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that photograph into a problem. The numbers associated with this problem are realistic. Go ahead and copy it down into your notes as I read it to you here. A 148 gram baseball, that's a standard that is used by the major leagues. A major league baseball must have a specific mass. It's between 145 and 150 grams. So I chose 148 grams here as a nice number in between. Okay, the 148 gram baseball is traveling at 40 meters per second when it's struck by a bat, which reverses the direction of the ball such that it leaves the bat at a speed of 60 meters per second. We're going to assume, by the way, that the ball is moving horizontally right before the collision and right after the collision. We're going to ignore the projectile motion associated with the baseball. And then the bat is in contact with the baseball for a total of five milliseconds. That would be measured by using, for example, high-speed photography. We're going to calculate a couple of things. We're going to calculate the impulse delivered or imparted to the ball, as we say. And then we'll also calculate the average force that's exerted upon the ball due to the bat. Okay, here's then how we're gonna draw out the situation. Okay, so first of all, right here is the baseball, we'll say right before the collision, <clears throat> the baseball has a mass M of 148 grams, that's 0.148 kilograms once we do the conversion. Okay, and then right here is the initial velocity vector of the baseball, we'll call that V1 naught, that's given to us as 40 meters per second. Okay, and then the baseball is in contact with the bat head. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my baseball bat here, and let's say that the bat head is like this. It's facing the camera like so, and the ball comes in contact with the bat like that. So then therefore, I'll draw out the bat head in the following manner. So right here is the bat head like so. Here's the bat. Okay, and then here's the baseball in contact with the bat like so. The amount of time over which the contact occurs is given to us as five milliseconds. Once again, this would be photographed by using high-speed photography. Five milliseconds is five times 10 to the minus three seconds. That's five thousandths of a second. That's a reasonable number when talking about this situation. And then after the ball leaves the bat, like so, it then has a final velocity in this direction, V1 final we'll call it, that's equal to negative 60 meters per second. It does say, of course, that the ball reverses direction after colliding with the bat. Therefore, we have to write that vector as a negative number. This is an easy mistake to make in a basic problem such as this. Okay, now here's our impulse equation. Okay, the impulse that's delivered or imparted to object number one here, the ball, is equal to the following. It's equal to the average force exerted upon the ball multiplied by the time interval delta t, but this is also equal to the change in momentum of the ball. And the change in momentum of the ball can be easily calculated in part A of the problem to find the impulse J. So basically what we're doing is we're using this portion of the expression here for part A of the problem. So for part A, J is equal to the change in momentum of the ball. So you just do final momentum like so, minus initial momentum, and then we calculate that out. When we do, we end up with units that are in terms of newtons multiplied by seconds. This will be a negative number in this problem, and the reason for that is because the J vector that's exerted upon the ball points to the left-hand side. The J vector is always in the same direction as the force vector. Okay, let's just go ahead and calculate it now. So I have 0.148, and then I'll multiply by quantity negative 60 minus 40 once I do the math. And I end up here with a reasonable number. This ends up being negative 14.8 newton seconds. So while the bat is in contact with the baseball, let me use the red marker here, right here, for example, is the force vector J1 that's exerted upon the ball. That's gonna be the same as the direction of the force vector itself. Let me go ahead and write this as average force, and then I'll use the vector sign right here, F1. That's then what's gonna be asked for in part B of the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and move to part B of the problem. In part B of the problem, we're using this portion of the expression here. So then therefore, the impulse that's imparted or delivered to the ball is equal to the average amount of force exerted on the ball multiplied by the time delta t. 
So in order to calculate the force, which is what we're doing here in part B of the problem, you have to be able to measure the time interval over which the collision occurs. Realistically, the only way to do that is by using high-speed photography. All right, so then therefore, let's just go ahead and finish up. So the average force that's exerted upon the ball is the impulse divided by the time interval. So take the impulse that we have in terms of Newton seconds and divide by five times 10 to the minus three seconds. And you end up here with a fair amount of force that ends up being negative 2960 Newtons. That's a realistic number, just to give you an idea as to how big that is, that's equal to the equivalent of about 665 pounds of force. So ultimately that's the amount of force that's exerted by the baseball bat upon the baseball, and yes, it is an average quantity, but describing it as an average is perfectly fine. Okay, so that concludes this brief look at impulse.